Welcome to the Total Connector Show. My name is Kevin Navani. My special guest and co-host again is Tip or Thibaut Maréchal, right? Do I pronounce it correctly? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Hey, Kevin. Right. So, Tip, uh, we were thinking um, uh, you, uh, how to how to call this. If we're doing if we're doing this on a regular basis, like whatever, every week or every second week. Uh, whether we can call it, you know, a total Bitcoin recap, or as you said, like a limitless uh, rabbit hole. I like that because there's actually a movie, a series called uh, uh, Limitless, really uh, thrilling. So I thought, you know, uh, it, Bitcoin is really limitless when it comes to the rabbit hole. So uh, let's go dive into a, a specific point we want to talk about is um, there's this article uh, I want to start off with, which I showed you just previously. Uh, is the negative uh, it's called floodgates are open so the, the, the taboo is broken German banks start charging retail savers with negative interest rates whether it's called deposit accounts or savings accounts it doesn't matter so there's really a, a, a couple of quotes which uh, you know um, really interesting uh, it says here charging retail clients for the savings starting with very first euro in their accounts so the bunch of uh, banks is gonna, you know, planning to impose a rate of minus 0.5% to all savings in certain new accounts and on and on. So, you know, it's it's crazy. And even the uh, one of the, the, the Grubel, the guy is called Grubel who served as Credit Suisse. Uh, he, he slammed the uh, European Central Bank policy and says negative interest rates are crazy. That means money is not worth anything anymore. What's your take on that? <laughs> this is crazy. Yeah, mad, I mean, mad <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, it's a very humbling reminder that the euro is an experiment that is still nascent. I mean, it's only 17 years old. You know, Bitcoin is 11, uh, and so yeah, it's just a good reminder that we're still testing things out, and unfortunately. You know, the ECB is just testing and doing experiments on, on people's money. And yeah, I think it, it, it's very, from a very pragmatic uh, point of view, it, negative interest rates makes zero sense. Because money is supposed to be that ultimate collateral, that most sellable good in, a, in an economy. And so why... Why would I get a, a negative rate on that if I'm just holding it in a bank account, right? Because today, of course, money is digital. Like if I'm holding cash, like I'm not going to see my, my cash notes like shrink in size, right? If we were to take that as a proxy of, 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 um, of just like value shrinking. So yeah, it's a, it's a really, dis, it's really disturbing to see this happen in Europe now, um, especially with the erosion of cash, like we're seeing cashless societies emerge more and more, especially in the uh, Nordic countries in Europe. So then it's trivial for, for the central bank and, and other national central banks uh, to impose that theft on, on citizens. Um, and, um, but the reality is the ECB is, is stuck in that situation. So they, they have to lower rates to quote unquote, stimulate growth and, and bring back, um, you know, just trades and, and, and the growth in general and in Europe and, and exports and all that. And so it's the only lever that they can play with. Um, because we've looked at the other lever that governments have, which is the fiscal policy. Um, and we've seen what happens uh, when governments try to raise taxes. Uh, you have the yellow vest and, and that movement has been going for over a year and it triggered in, in many other uh, regions of the world. Uh, and that's what happens when, when you ask people to, to pay more money to a government that is providing um, less and less services, or at least it, it, it perceived this way. Um, so what, what will happen in Europe? Uh, that's the, that's also the, the beauty of this. 
Um, are gonna people are yeah. people gonna are, are people gonna like start uh, like stacking their fiat cash? They're more and more worthless fiat cash under the pillow, or start you know buying gold, which is already being started to uh, being started to being you know being restricted, uh, you know whatever amount or you know KYC or all these things, you know anti money laundering, blah blah. So it's really exciting. I mean, I, I'm surprised that people are not on the streets right now. I mean, really out. Right, I, and <laughs> and I think that that's why that that second lever uh, is so interesting for for governments and in that case it's central bank which is like it's you know usually central banks are are independent from governments and of course the european central bank is sort of dealing with multiple different governments uh, but it's it's a beautiful lever in the way that most people don't really fully understand uh money and interest rates and and how all these things work because it's it's complex keynesians made it extremely complex um, and also the reality that yeah, people are busy you know, running their lives, you know, taking care of their families, earning a living. And so when you're back home at 6 p.m. in the evening, you don't want to read on, on the ECB's recent move to go right. in the negative territories for interest rates. It's not something that most people do besides Bitcoiners. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and it's not comfortable thinking about it. I mean, yeah, besides being conditioned and brainwashed not to question anything, People, right. you know, don't want to get out of the comfort zone, you know, even in the thinking. I think it's just a lot to right. do with fears, of course, with fears and interdependencies, you know, like, yeah, as you said, you know, people have a job, they have to work like Monday to Friday from nine to whatever, five, you know, it's, it's crazy. So what are they going to do? Like, when, when are they going to take the time even to question why Bitcoin? <laughs> so. Exactly. Well, I mean, again, it's a phenomenal economic incentive that will, I believe, force at least a minority of the population to start thinking about other ways. Because if you're working to save your money because you want to save for your kids' education in the future or you want to buy a house or a nice holiday, um, and you're seeing your money erode over time because your bank is telling you, now we're going to charge you 0.5%, and you used to make Two percent five ten years ago I, I, I don't have the European rates in mind uh, but that's sort of the targets in, in the United States and, and Canada for now for instance and and all of a sudden you're going into negative territories well you're going to think about other ways and so perhaps there's this notion that some people are going to go back to cash like physical cash hoarding cash and this is where the IMF I think released a paper perhaps a year ago now uh, where they really went creative and were like, look, we we need to go in negative interest rate territory. So how can we make this work? And they started laying the ground for that dual currency system where you would have negative interest rates on cash balances in people's accounts. I'm sorry, on, on basically digital balances on, on people's bank accounts. And you would peg the value of physical cash to those balances and that way there's no way to escape the the negative interest rate policies um, and that of course is if you're still tolerating cash you can just get rid of cash and go into cashless society and, and therefore it's just much easier to apply that negative interest rate to, to people's bank accounts uh, but again there's a narrative that is spreading um, which stipulates that charging people's um, bank accounts with a storage fee, a uh, security fee, it, you know, is a good rational way of doing banking in the 21st century. Um, I wonder if they're going to be successful in spreading that narrative and let, and making people uh, accept it socially. Um, I think it's ludicrous, but again, we've seen time and time that, that they're extremely uh, good at, at positioning narrative. So we'll, we'll see uh, how this pans out. Yeah, and I'm really um, curious what's going to happen in Germany, because in Germany, the people, uh, it's one of the few countries that people really, they love cash. They, uh, you know, they're a huge number of advocates. I think it's about like 70, 80% of you know, people holding cash. 
you know, the advocates of cash they 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 still know you know what what uh, you know, whatever you know like anonymous uh at least a fiat medium is holding it in cash so i wonder what people are going to do uh, after you know these plants are gradually like the frog you know in the water that's been boiled up like uh, slowly slowly one celsius by one celsius uh, how they're going to react to this are they going to rise up and you know say something or are they going to have the pain points eventually to question you know where we're going with this with this execution of this eradication of of, of cash yeah on the uh, on the individual level definitely uh, uh, a possibility that people start questioning that but again um, it if the the narratives are well positioned people may not decide to actively and act against it uh, I think on a, on a on a larger, perhaps beyond the individual scale, like corporate scale, uh, you know, we've seen when we talked about this in the last episode that we've seen um, large amounts of, of uh, corporate debt being in that negative interest rate uh, territory as well. Um, I suspect that this may keep on on happening, and 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 you know. Nobody, again, nobody knows how long this can go, um, how high the stock markets can go with uh, that uh, debt fueled growth uh, that is completely unsustainable. You know, we've yeah. seen um, the stock market um, bull run that we're seeing since uh, 2008. It has been the, the largest in, in time horizon and in also uh, price appreciation uh, since the 1930s, you know? And yeah. we know what happened in the 1930s after that massive bull run. Um, it, was a, it was the Great Depression. Um, so yeah. Um, yeah, so the Great Depression is is nothing. Is I mean, it's peanuts to what is about to come. And of course, you know they can procrastinate. They can, uh, you know, extend this bubble, this this balloon, a little bit further. That, I have no question about that. Maybe they can extend it really for years to come. We don't know, right? Yeah, the issue the issue that I personally see is the hubris of the people in charge. You know when. <laughs> So now you have Christine Lagarde who got, uh, you know, brought into that role of the head or chairman, I don't know what the title is, of the, the European Central European Bank. Central Bank. And wasn't she convicted of, of, uh, of uh, uh, paying out tax taxpayers, uh, taxpayers' money to some kind of French businessman, yeah. politician? <laughs> Yeah, she was involved in, uh, as part of her previous role as the Ministry of Finance in France, she was uh -huh. involved in, in, in these odd cases of public money, uh, yeah, manipulation, uh, mm -hmm. malusage. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's that chronic capitalism, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and back to the hubris of these, of these folks, I mean, you know, she publicly stated a few days or a week ago um, that it was okay to, to have negative rates on on people's money uh, and that actually people had to be like happy because uh, they had jobs, you know? Like, oh, they shouldn't complain. At least they have jobs. Um, I mean, this is... This is so arrogant. Yeah, this is beyond arrogant. This is, I don't know, this right. woman is probably disillusioned. I, they, all these people, I think they're, they really believe in that shit. It, well, it's the, it, it's the modern slavery, right? Right. It's like, ah, oh, don't ask questions. Like, just go work. We'll pay you something. And don't complain if the money you put on the side for your kids um, is eroding because I'm manipulating the supply of that money. Uh, yeah, it's and because they gotta preserve and 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 uh, you know uh, keep the status quo of the power in control or the control in power. <laughs> it's the tip, you know, uh, the, the, right. the pyramid system. I mean, you gotta keep it. That that's a legitimate legitimate justification, I guess, for them. You know, uh, like they right. really believe in it. 
they you know it's this is their mission this is their mission is to target that you know illusion of two three percent inflation rates on a yearly basis which is this is a very yeah keynesian view of the world it's like okay let's like try to put math around how um economics uh and, and societies work and let's try to micromanage everything and not even in a country because the european central bank is doing that with 27 countries you know um and let's try to micromanage all the flows of, of economic activity and aim for that target range of inflation no matter what the money supply is what we'll find ways to to get to that target and it's extremely arrogant again to, to think that you can uh, decide what the cost of capital is uh, for many different countries operating on many different cultural traits um, you know cadence different um, industries um, different demographic like demographics it's it's crazy um, so wh yeah where is that going uh, it's uncharted territory we have never seen negative interest rate applied to money and capital like it again from a very first principles approach it, it makes no sense to pay someone who borrows um, so yeah, it should be, uh, I mean, it's, you know, many people said that it's the perfect uh, storm for, for Bitcoin, right? For a yeah. scarce asset that is uninflatable, that is censorship resistant uh, and unseizable. It's, it's beautiful. So I, I unfortunately believe that more and more there's going to be pain in that transition from a fiat world to a Bitcoin world. I guess that's what's necessary. People got to feel the pain. They're not going to wake up because as long as they don't need it, like, you know, what do I need it for? I understand, you know, their, you know, their, their reaction, their, you know, their primary reaction. It's understandable, you know, especially in Western or in Europe or whatever, wherever we are in those Western developed countries. I totally understand it. You know, it's like, what do I need? You know, they have other worries and concerns and, <laughs> priorities in life right but yeah, as soon yeah. as they 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 feel the pain the erosion of their savings you know their uh proof gone i mean you know even insurance packages i mean i i told my girlfriend just you know get rid of all the insurance bullshit it's uh, because uh, they've never and they've never calculated the inflation which is about to cut because you know where's the you know in pension, pension what about the pension funds we there is no pension in whatever, 20, 30 years. So uh, they're all going to be insolvent. And I think this is, this yeah. is like a bigger picture, which people need to, uh, you know, occupy themselves uh, and, and research and, and really go into the rabbit hole, you know, as, as we call it. 100%. My, most of my friends are in their mid 20s, mid 30s between that range of, uh, I would say, you know, typical millennial and uh, disposable income, not that many assets, no real estate, because it's too expensive. Uh, some level of debt sometimes from university. Uh, and when we speak about pension funds in the future and their retirement plans, we all know very well that well, we're never going to get that money back. Like, we're not the, the boomers. Money, we're not the boomers. Right. right? <laughs> okay, boomer. <laughs> yeah. But you realize, you know, I'm paying a roughly 32% in income tax here in Quebec, in wow. Canada, which is insane. Yeah. Another form of theft. Yeah. So. Yes. And I have no, it's like deducted at source, right? So I can't even keep that money for a year, make some interest on it, and then like give it to the government. No, the government is like taking it right away. Um, and if they take too much, they'll reimburse me, you know, at the next um, fiscal year, which is again, um, they're making interest on that money. I'm not. 
but they're not paying me the interest, of course, right? Um, and so you realize that this money is going somewhere, right? I don't really know how it's being used, but that's another point. Uh, yeah, zero. I just know that <laughs> I, I will never, yeah, I will never get it back, right. right? And so at which point do we tolerate this? And until when, you know, until when do we do we just accept that as the norm and don't bark about it? Because I mean, at some point, um, I, if I'm not seeing any value or any return on, on that, on that money that is going somewhere, like I'm going to start questioning that. And today, like, it's pretty hard me just rejecting it because the government has that monopoly on, on violence and, and on, on the application of law, right. And the definition of law and, and, and so, you don't want to go against that uh, unless you're okay to go to jail, right? With, you know, people who've done fiscal evasion, so not paying their taxes, uh, have had bad, uh, bad experiences, to say the least. Um, but what happens when all of a sudden you have a whole nation who starts to, to question this and realize that they're not, that this system doesn't really work. They're not getting the, 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 the money that they're expecting to get, or not even the money, but the value, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, it's that, I think, I'm part of this uh, class from uh, Seyfedin on, uh, on economics, Austrian mm. economics, it's yeah. giving, mm -hmm. really good, and it goes deep on, on really clear first principles of economics, and it talks about, you know, the fact that if you buy um, whatever, like uh, some bread for $3, the three dollars you're spending, you're expecting to the bread that this the bread will have more value than three dollars. Otherwise, you wouldn't be spending the three dollars. But when it comes that logic, which is super simple to understand, like any any toddler would be able to understand that. Um, well, all of a sudden, it disappears in in the in macroeconomics, quote unquote, right? That. Uh, <laughs> that invented field of study, uh, but it, it, it shouldn't. I mean, if I'm giving, let's say a thousand dollars every month to the government, um, well, I'm expecting to get more than a thousand dollars back in, in services, um, whether it's, you know, the services they currently providing, healthcare, transportation, uh, and whatnot. Uh, but I don't, I don't think I'm getting that today. And so, um, yeah, I, I really wonder how uh, how people will will start reflecting on on that gap. Yeah, it's got a good question, good question. When people are going to start voting with the money instead of voting in the you know political uh, voting booths, you know where they go and they they vote for a political party, which is again you know a puppet or an executioner of that system. And you know Safina Namu's uh, opinion on this. He he. There's a lot of, of Bitcoiners, you know, who who say, you know, I don't vote. And I mean, what, what's the, even Mike Glad, Gladstein? I think in one, one of the interviews with Peter McCormick, he said he, you know, he doesn't go. What I also totally support. You know, why would you go support a system that, you know, you you don't have any influence whether the party is green, brown, blue, red, or whatever, a conservative, liberal, green. Uh, you know, social democratic. I mean, it's all <laughs> bullshit. I mean, this is not going to change anything. It is not going to change the roots of that, of this system of this, of these, you know, criminal yeah. structures. Where, where well, is it? Um, you know, yeah. Politics is uh, is that very entertaining theater of fake dichotomies of ideas. Because in the end, most of these politicians, they go from one party to another, they follow what's hyped, what's the flavor of the day, and, and they get paid to do it and entertain people, go on, uh, you know, media outlets, do interviews, and, uh, and yeah, utilize the flavor of the day to get elected. Whether, yeah. you know, in France, we've had uh, the, the, the you know, gay, gay marriage, I was like this huge policy that, uh, you know, gave a, a lot of, uh, of good um, 
I would say, goodwill to Hollande, right? Um, but in the end, he did a lot of garbage. And, and that's true for all politicians. That, that system, yeah, it's completely, uh, completely flawed. I haven't followed politics in, I guess, two years now. And yeah. I mean, yeah. I uh, absolutely don't care about it. <laughs> exactly. I don't follow I mainstream. Don't yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't follow mainstream. I don't have a television set or radio. I, I don't read newspapers. It's all, you know, it just makes you sick. I mean, and, yeah. and then on the other hand, you've got this hierarchy of central banking structure uh, whatever the ECB or actually at the top, I, I would, I would, I wrote some articles on, on the Bank for International Settlements that have zero accountability. They have total Im Im immunity. They stand above the law. I mean, people, I think it, uh, people need to understand that this is, uh, this is a structure that is, you know, uh, made to, uh, to, 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 you know, keep, you know, preserve the status quo and, and they can do anything they want without zero accountability, zero auditability, and, you know, zero uh, responsibility. So. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess that's the huge issue with crony capitalism and the fact that you have governments and corporations in bed together. And especially when you have these people or certain sets of, of individuals in, in that sort of configuration that control the money supply, then for sure it, you can't, can't do much uh, against that. It's, uh, it's pretty hard because the money in the end is, is, the, is the instrument which allows everyone, whether it's individuals and, and companies to, to, to live to trade, to exchange goods and services, to save and invest capital for productivity increases. Like it's, yeah, if you control that, you distort everything and, uh, and you distort political ideas, um, which will influence how people vote, which will influence the politicians that get elected. And, and therefore you're sort of stuck in that cycle. Uh, you know, we've seen what happened in, in Germany, right? And, you know, after this, the First World War, um, the massive inflation that was created by warfare um, led to a huge um, ideology um, of um, basically blaming a particular group of the population uh, for, for that. And, uh, and so you create populism and people start being irrationally angry um, and and that that wealth gap which led to that rise of populism is is created by by the abuse of of control on, on the money production and then you start digging and you realize that actually any type of control over the money production will be abused and therefore, well, you cannot put human beings who are uh, always going to be corrupted at some point, especially when power gets centralized in a small group of elite individuals. Right. Right. You just cannot give that power to human beings. We're too fallacious. And so this is where you realize that separating um, money from the state and, and really having a system which is which has a set of rules that everybody abide by and agree in order to participate is the only way to have a good sound money which is not manipulated and which does not distort price signals in the market and does not create unfair wealth gaps uh, and leads to free societies uh, and that is bitcoin and it, it's it's phenomenal seeing those two tracks emerge now more and more um and it's going to be a massive battle in the next decade yeah um yeah. once we see number go up yeah uh you know today bitcoin is the 11th uh largest base uh 
money supply, right? So, I mean, I think we, we spoke about this in another episode again, yeah. but it's, it's not nothing. Yeah. And nothing. so as it keeps on climbing, because mm-hmm. that's what it's supposed to be doing, number go up. Mm-hmm. Um, well, for sure, the establishment, uh, the, the incumbents are going to, by default, resist. And so that resistance um, will come at great, um, I think, violence at some point. I, and yeah. I don't want to be this this guy who's cynical. No, about, but you're uh, right because it's about separation and, of you know. It's about in essence about freedom, but in essence, uh, you know. But if you think about it again, it's about separation of money and state and you know and government and central banks. You know this separation and then the seniorage, right? It's about taxes. So if they can't tax it, if they can't rent seek, uh, well, they're going to probably, yeah, um, in one way or another, use more force, violence, aggression, or whatever, coercion. Right. 100%. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, yeah, th- this was a sort of a, a humbling comment on, on a tweet I posted perhaps that's a week ago, which was on sort of the the separation of, of church and state, like basically, you know, Gutenberg's printing press, like really uh, off. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, good. Are we back? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, so there was this tweet about Gutenberg's printing press breaking the monopoly uh, on uh, knowledge by the church. And, uh, and I was trying to make a comparison between that and Satoshi's uh, Bitcoin, which broke the monopoly uh, on money production by, by central banks. And, and then making the argument that, you know, the first led to a, an era of prosperity where people finally had access to a very large uh, scope of knowledge that was not controlled by the church anymore. And we will get the same thing even bigger in terms of prosperity when we finally have money that is separated from from the state but this guy was making the argument that yeah sure but before you get that you're gonna you know we got you know the inquisition and and really violent uh periods of history uh for the, the first scenario where the church tried to resist and and fight against that and so definitely, you know, especially when you have access to, to the printing press of money, not only knowledge, uh, you're going you're gonna, to, by default, uh, try to resist that, that change. And so uh, I just wonder how, how that will, will pan out in the next decades. But definitely there's going to be violence, social attacks, you know, Bitcoiners destroy the financial system because they escape to this dark money of the internet thing uh so they are the ones to blame because you're out of a job and you're in the street um you know looking for for your next meal type of thing i could totally see a a scenario where where that headline is actually you know somewhere in a in a mainstream media outlet again i don't want to be the sort of like super negative pessimistic guy I'm know, but super it's bullish understanding, on humanity yeah it's important but, to understand the yeah. reality the reality that uh you know this is the reality what we, we, we people need to go at least once into the rabbit hole and understand the reality understand the problem the cause the root cause and then the solutions are already here it's it's unbelievable i mean we don't have much time like to talk about you know the beautiful developments going on in the bitcoin space you know all the layerings the uh, uh, the 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 sort of the the circle economies that are that are evolving, you know, with Bitfinex and Bitrefill and what have you, and all these like uh, institutions even coming in. So uh, there's a lot of positive, you know, things going on. You know, even I heard uh, one or two senators now they are true Bitcoiners going into the Senate in the U.S. at least. You know, so, so <laughs> yeah, there's yeah, there's yeah. something going on. So people, I think what we need uh, again, and I, I think I was one of the first ones to uh, to to uh, coin the term uh, critical adoption, not mass adoption, because I, you know, I thought, okay, 
maybe it's not, it's not about mass adoption. It's once we have this critical adoption rate, then the mass adoption is going to be a chain reaction. So this is what we, what we will witness, I think, in the years to come. It won't take decades. Yeah. Yeah. No, definitely. And, and you brought a super, I think, critical point, critical adoption. Uh, you got to have the, a few key individuals with enough skin in the game that will prevent, uh, basically, whether it's legislations or, or social movements to emerge against Bitcoin. And, uh, and once that, and that's the beauty of Bitcoin, right? It's sort of the, it, it feeds on, on, on human greed and it feeds on, on basically the, the hodlers. It's rewarding hodlers who are basically not selling their Bitcoins with an appreciation of the asset. And so these hodlers are more economically incentivized to go and, uh, and, and fight against uh, Bitcoin FUD or, or any other attempt to slow the adoption and spread of, of Bitcoin. Um, and that, that's, a, that's a phenomenal sort of a game theoretical aspect of Bitcoin. Exactly, yeah. So Tip, um, uh, let's, let's keep this uh, short. I really enjoyed this. We should do this uh, really on a regular basis, uh, as I said. And uh, um, yeah, uh, I think you know, people cannot imagine what, what life civilization uh, within prosperity can look like with hard and scarce money, which is Bitcoin. And uh, you know, we, we can inspire them, we can educate them, we can inform them, you know, we can really <laughs> give them all, all the knowledge and, and wisdom and love uh, and, and, and ideas, but people got to really, it's an individual journey. I think people, everyone got to, you know, make for themselves. Oh yeah, absolutely. hundred percent agree. Bitcoin is so personal. Yeah. It's intimate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Tip, thank you so much for joining me again and I'll talk to you again soon. Thanks, Kevin. Have Had a, a blast. Night. Thank you, man. Have a good thank weekend. You. Bye-bye. Bye. Welcome to the podcast show by Kei Vandavani, The Total Connector, Total Bitcoin, Awesome Economics, The Hardest and Scarcest Money Ever Created in Human History, Bitcoin.